Hello, this Hi. is Mary Kay with Country Music Matters, and we are with Stephanie Quayle again, and we love you. <laughs> I love you. I, it's so great to see you guys. We haven't seen you since uh, CMA Fest last year, yes. and so much has happened since then, especially since you released that latest album, Love the Way You See Me. Yes. How's this whirlwind been? It's incredible. I, I keep having to take a minute and just reflect on all that's happened since we put out the album in September. Selfish went to radio in November and it's just been explosive. And plus, you know, the Opry debut just a few mm. months back in April. I feel like it's, we're in that momentum time, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's really incredible. So you did the ACM red carpet. Oh yes. You did, um, you performed a Deep from the Heart Hurricane Relief Concert. Wow, talk and, about that. And like yeah. you said, um, and then your Opry, how was like your emotions through all those things? So many things. So the, the red carpet is, is a wild adventure, you know, and uh, getting to be the artist host for the Wrangler Network was so cool. And, and, uh, and getting to, you know, we all, all, our, all these artists, including, we all grew up together, we're growing up together, we're getting to feel each other's successes and growth, so it's so much fun to get to like talk to my friends about all the wild stuff that's going on in their careers. And uh, October, I got to perform at the uh, Hurricane Relief concert for the five former presidents at Texas A&M, and I tell you what, it didn't hit me until I got off the stage and I thought about my grandfather. And uh, he was in politics, and I just thought how special that would have been for him to see this momentous historic occasion for such an incredible cause. And uh, you know me, I, sometimes I say things. And so I, uh, <laughs> so I got to meet the five former presidents prior to performing. Uh, so my husband and I go in and they're gonna allow us to take one photograph and they very specifically said, hey guys, like, keep, we have to keep it really brief. We've got a lot of stuff to do tonight. And I'm like, okay, don't mess this up. Let's just go. And we walk in and President Clinton is the first to greet us. He immediately is so gracious and kind and welcoming. And then President Bush, and we went down the line, and everyone was so talkative. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be talking to you guys, <laughs> you know? Well, then I get up on stage, and I had no idea they were going to be in the front row. You know, I thought, you know, with 10,000 people, they might be up in like a, you know, who knows? And uh, so I walk up on stage, like I do every show, and I look down at the front row. Well, here are my friends. By former presidents. <laughs> so say, hey guys. Yeah, I did that. And I had no idea until afterward when I watched it back. And I'm like, oh <laughs> no, I don't, I did. I but did. that's you. It's me. You Why know, should you be something you're that's not? That's true, and it was it was very honest, you know. Just, and I'm sure they appreciated that. You know, they were super kind. It was it was really it's one of those moments I will always look back on. Just sometimes I feel like Forrest Gump. You know, I'm like, how <laughs> What? This is incredible. So. Now your song Selfish kind of takes a different meaning. It doesn't quite mean what the word Absolutely. is. What's the insight into that? Yeah, sure. So I wrote this song with Andy Wills and Tortillier. And I've been married now for three years. I'm going strong, baby. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, we commute to see each other, my husband and I. So I, I was just walking into this ready self session feeling really selfish. I was like, I don't want to share him. I want more time with my guy. I did this, I think. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Andy and Tori were like, tell us more. You know, Tori's on the keys. This is Tori. And uh, I, just, I just started talking about how, you know, we all want more time with the ones we love. And I think that's the, the right kind of selfish. And to be able to write a song that has a bold message from a woman's perspective, wanting more time with the one you love. It's been amazing to watch the fans' reactions. And we got to see it firsthand being on the road last summer. You know, traveling 9,000 miles, crisscrossing the country from campfires to, you know, 18,000 person festivals. You know, we, we got to experience the song through the fans' eyes, and that's how I knew, like, there's something here. And that's um, awesome. Was music part of your life in school? Yes. And any yes. teachers, like, really oh, influenced you? For sure. Marco Farrow. My choir teacher, he I, I still talk with him. Uh, he's still in Montana, and he he just you know I think what's so important for our teachers and our mentors and for anyone that had the opportunity to say, speak into our lives, he never said I couldn't. He always guided me in a way of like try this or how about this, and it, I just 
it's just a big joy. So thank you for bringing him up. Well, that's special. A lot of Absolutely. people don't think about that, but there is always sure. somebody, if, if even if it's family or somebody yeah. in school, they've yeah. always supported you. Well, it's true. And, you know, my, my uh, step-grandmother growing up, I started piano when I was four, and she was my piano teacher. She was tough as nails. I could only get away with anything if I was performing, like, a recital in front of an audience to where I could, like, skip a part intentionally. <laughs> and I'd look at her, and I'd, she, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be in so much trouble later. But, you know, I was that kind of kid. I was a little, a little bit of a rebel. <laughs> oh, no. Not me? No. Come on. <laughs> so that song, Winnebago, is still carrying you through this year on this KOA tour. Oh, absolutely. How crazy has that been? It's incredible. You know, that song is so much fun. And it, it takes you to all these incredible places across America. And we went and lived that song. And we get to live it every show. It's one of those songs that just feels so good. And it's it's got so much imagery in the lyric. And uh, KOA, they're one of our most incredible partners in this wild adventure and we've been able to really share the music because I think at the end of the day we all want the same thing. We want our campers, our fans to have the best experience and create awesome memories. So it's been really fun to incorporate you know our worlds. Now you in June uh, this month the 15th didn't you play your first concert in your home state? Is that your first one? No, but, oh, okay. I, but I, I love going home to Montana. I mean, it, every year it just feels, you know, you, you feel the impact of it, especially through the eyes of, like, the people that raised you. I mean, when I say I'm made in Montana, it's a thousand percent the truth. Now you have some a show coming up in Spain. Oh. And... and and I might be Spanish. I just learned. You just might be. I might be. You might be. So, so there, you home. better you better brush up. You better <laughs> I know, brush up. I know. I have a lot to learn. I'm so excited. And then later on in the year, you're going to be opening for Clint Black. Yes. How exciting is that? It's it's all crazy exciting. And guess what was announced today? I don't know, but you're going to tell us. You get to play Florida Georgia Line, on September 8th. Wow. And Cole Swindell, and Ray Lynn. And uh, Nelly, if you want to go and take a ride with me. <laughs> so, uh, and that little uh, that little ham Mason, got my eye on you, Mason Ramsey. I'm coming for you. <laughs> so I bet it's he's all real scared. Incredible. You know, I think what's so amazing is, you know, a couple nights ago, no kidding, I got to perform for Reba. Yeah. This is real life, you guys. It's just incredible. So that does does that make you feel like, wow, I've made it? No. I have a long way to go, <laughs> but I think it's a, it confirms that I'm on the right path, and it's a, a testimony to the music and to our, to, our, to our incredible team that works tirelessly to get my voice heard, so it, it's really special. Performing for Reba will go down in history as one of the greatest moments of my life. Getting to sing to her, you know, it was a very intimate setting, there were like 50 people there. And uh, it, it just, she is just, there's a reason why she is the queen of country. You had a she very is. busy CMA Fest. Yes, yes. And there were a lot of women artists performing this year. Yes. Like, they're, it, it's becoming crazy. As it should be. Yep, Good job, yep. gentlemen. We're the, coming. <laughs> the gals are coming on strong. That's right, babe. They are. You did a lot this year. Yeah, it's been incredible. And I think it's not even July yet. <laughs> no. Or it's July. Oh, this isn't your depending, first, yeah. Depending when this comes out, it's July. Yeah, it's July. It's July. <laughs> Whatever we got it, we can edit. We can edit. Yes, it's this right. is this is not your first time at Stoney's. It's no. like home to you. I know you like playing everywhere, but what is kind of like your favorite setting? Like intimate, big crowds. Oh, man, yeah. Each one has such a special memory attached to it. Uh, I I just performed on the Grand Ole Opry. I made my debut, so there is no greater stage in country music. I. Uh, I, that that will forever be, you know, that's the Opry. But I think, you know, there's not one place because there's a memory with every single one. You know, I think what's amazing about coming back to Stoney's is getting to see our fan base here locally that keeps coming back and how they share our music and then they share their, and it just keeps building and building. and. That's what's so incredible, you know, to get messages from the fans of the Flock of Quail that are coming out tonight, and they're like, I got my t-shirt on, I got my hat, I'll be in the front. It's, it's the greatest, you know? We love making music for them. Now, are there certain times when the crowd kind of gears to what you're gonna play? Like, you may 
decide on songs and then all of a sudden the crowd's like, well, maybe I won't do that one or... Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, you know, we, we tend to create a set list, but I kind of look at it like, like anything could change and move. You know, there could be a moment that happens with the fans or, or I'll see someone in the crowd and it just, it, it hits me. It's like, no, we got to do something different here. Uh, we also will throw in new music which is really fun to just say, hey, we're going to try a brand new song out, and if you don't like it, I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and they're, they'll tell you. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay yeah. or nay, they will. They're they not, will. They're not but silent. But that's the best, you know, you can, you can see it, and I think it's a great, it's a great way to find out if this song matters. You know, if it's as, I say, if it's as deep as a dog dish or deep as the ocean, they all have a purpose, you know, and that's what I love about country music. We have the stories. It doesn't it doesn't have to rip out your guts every single song, but you gotta have a little bit of everything. And, and the the fans know. They they always tell you. Now, do you live in Nashville now? I do. Yes. And Music Row seems to be getting wedged out with all this progress. Uh, How do so you feel fun. about like about all that? Like How relevant is the history? So I can buy it up and <laughs> save it all. <laughs> I mean. That, that history is still so relevant. Yeah, of course, of course. I think that it's one of those, it's one of those double-edged swords, you know? It's, uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, there's so much awareness about Nashville now. And so it's created this beautiful insurgence on steroids of people wanting to come and experience one of the coolest towns in the history of the world. With that comes growth, with, with that comes you know, the obstacles of how do you take care of the old and the new and this kind of merging of these worlds and I'm just glad I sing. <laughs> I wouldn't want that job. It's hard, it's hard to watch that. You know, I, I see that in my hometown. I see that in my hometown in, in Bozeman, Montana. It's, a, it, it's an extraordinary place and, and growth happens and so what's the best way to make it all work so you don't lose that history because that's so important so what other than all your travels what do you got going on the rest of the year oh man what am i it's doing it's half over this year's like I half doing over doing with my world <laughs> you know really it's a we're on tour so uh you know on my on if i get a couple of days off in places i'll head to montana and jump on the back of my horse and make supper for my family and and just your wife. <laughs> we love sitting with you every time. You always accommodate us with anything we wow. ask. You guys are awesome. We appreciate, just appreciate it. And sharing me. Oh, heck, you're worth sharing. Because <laughs> you're a diamond and you're no longer a diamond in the rough. Thank you. You are a diamond. Thank you. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out with Stephanie Quayle at Stoney's in Las Vegas. Have a great night. Thanks.